Vigilante. Creating a painting of the Navy's Mach 2 photo recon jet launching from the deck of the USS John F. Kennedy. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. We have a very special episode today. We're going to show you the step by step process painting North American's RA 5C Vigilante, and the painting's title is Unbridled Elegance. The North American A3J, later designated the A5, first flew in 1958. It was a Mach 2 uh, naval attack bomber in its original configuration, shown here on the cover of Air Progress in this beautiful Cal Smith rendering. Uh, inspirational for me as an artist to see uh, this kind of imagery, and it's showing the A3J launching a uh, nuclear weapon uh, through its aft um, bomb bay which was a unique concept. It wasn't that successful and led, led the airplane to be uh, reconfigured and rebuilt as a photo reconnaissance platform. And that became the RA-5C, which flew in 1964 and saw extensive service in Vietnam. Of the 167 vigilantes built, 137 were built or converted uh, into the RA-5C model, which you see here. The idea for this painting, uh, I'll get into that in a moment, but uh, what we're going to see is the jet launching from the deck of the USS JFK. Uh, the John F. Kennedy was uh, the Navy's last conventionally powered, meaning non-nuclear aircraft carrier, commissioned in 1968. It's currently uh, out of commission, laid up in Philadelphia in a Navy yard there. The idea for the painting uh, was to show the uh, vigilante originally in formation and then that was changed to a landing and we started uh, studying the geometry for that. That concept uh, evolved into actually a uh, takeoff. We wanted to show the uh, vigilante on the deck of the uh, JFK as it was uh, coming down the uh, cat stroke on the catapult and um, uh, here we see an F-18 in that moment. We're going to view it from a different angle but uh, uh, Again, the, uh, the landing uh, was an interesting idea. We moved it to the launch. And uh, for that, I needed to know everything about the uh, bow. We were going to use the number one, uh, I'm sorry, the number three catapult, which was the left-hand bow catapult. And here we see the JFK uh, laid up at, in Norfolk, Virginia. That's the USS Forrestal in the background. And uh, the ship is uh, not in inspection order, but uh, this photo uh, gave me a tremendous amount of information for the forward deck. Uh, here you see a close-up. I'm going to be using all this uh, structure and all this information in uh, form uh, formatting the uh, painting. So first order of business is to reconstruct uh, my version of the forward deck of the JFK. And uh, I'm using here a 148th scale uh, trumpeter model of the RA-5C. And here we see the view that uh, my client has chosen. My client's name is Brian. He's a uh, second generation Boeing engineer. Uh, his parents uh, met at Boeing and he and his wife also met at Boeing. Uh, he recently retired from a 35 year career with the company. Uh, he's a pilot, a uh, great uh, aviation enthusiast. And the idea for this painting really goes all the way back to his childhood when he bought a model of the uh, vigilante and was inspired to uh, uh, to really get excited about that uh, jet airplane. Um, he became familiar with my artwork through uh, uh, connections at Edwards Air Force Base, and we met uh, in 2016 to start uh, working on this project. So the first order of business is to uh, shoot the model, and then I'm gonna recreate uh, the painting in uh, what we call a comp, which is, stands for comprehensive, and that's a rough sketch that shows the final idea for the whole composition. So here we go. We put the model photo into Photoshop. And then I'm going to start reconstructing uh, the uh, carrier deck. Here's the uh, catapult track. And uh, you notice that I've got a lot of good information from the model shot, the uh, low level, uh, low afternoon uh, 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 sunlight and the shadow on the deck and all sorts of reflections and really good uh, visual information uh, to work with. 
So here's a mock-up essentially of the painting in color. And the next step is to create the engineering drawing. Now this is a preliminary. Uh, you can see that I've indicated panel lines, a lot of detail from the model, but uh, the next step is to see the real airplane. And what we have here is the USS Midway, a uh, post-World War II era carrier. And the uh, Midway is currently in San Diego as a museum. And so uh, Brian flew down from Seattle and he and I met in San Diego for the weekend and spent a, uh, a wonderful day aboard the, uh, the Midway Museum uh, where the crew and the docents and the volunteers uh, really rolled out the red carpet for us uh, to see a real RA-5C on the deck. Uh, Brian is seen on the left and there's a uh, deck crewman there with the uh, ladder that uh, I was able to use to uh, literally get all over that airplane and see it close up. And I can't stress enough uh, the need for uh, any artist to uh, see the real uh, machine that he's going to depict. There are so many subtle uh, contours and curves and uh, compound curvature and all sorts of subtle structural details that you will never see on a model and really can't detect in a photo. And so uh, being up close and personal to the real machine, there's just no substitute for it. Here you can see my shadow as I take a picture of the uh, uh, spoiler assembly and uh, flap system on the uh, top of the, of the airplane. I'm gonna show you what I call the artist's uh, walk around. You know that a pilot always does a pre-flight walk around uh, of the airplane before uh, climbing into the cockpit. And uh, this is my version of that where I familiarize myself with the details and I use these photos uh, to help uh, do the final drawing, which you'll see in a moment. But uh, let me show you an example of the uh, artist's visual walk around of the airplane. And here we have the uh, nose probe and pitot boom on the RA-5C, uh, the integration into the nose cone itself. And then the panel lines, and here you see the detail of the uh, air refueling door uh, above the uh, uh, the uh, airplane number there, uh, the panels, the fasteners, uh, this all uh, becomes digested into the uh, final drawing and uh, much of it will show in the final painting. So here we are walking down the side of the airplane and uh, I'm going to show you the difference between the initial drawing and the final and you'll see uh, why this is so important. Uh, good structural details of the uh, nose gear uh, it's missing a landing light, but uh, you can see here the uh, oleo assembly, which is compressed. I'm going to have to extend that uh, to show that the airplane is airborne. Uh, but the uh, proportion of the tire, the wheel, the detail, uh, the strut, uh, it's very, very important to know this. On the midway, uh, again, the volunteers and docents were so uh, uh, generous and, and hospitable uh, for Brian and myself. Uh, we spent time looking and looking at the catapult tracks, studying uh, the uh, bridle system uh, used on the RA-5C. And uh, here you can see part of it. There's the forward assembly, the hold back assembly when the airplane is on uh, under tension on the cat. And uh, we were even briefed uh, in, in terms of uh, walking down the catapult track and looking at videos of actual launches and studying every aspect of it. So this is the final uh, detail drawing. It's also called the engineering drawing. Everything I'm gonna need to paint the airplane is represented in this image. And you can see we've moved it from on the deck to uh, leaving the deck. Now the main gear is still uh, on, on the uh, ship and it's just a millisecond away from becoming airborne. And the bridle has already uh, detached and is uh, about to go down the track that recovers it uh, at the bow of the carrier. Let me show you the difference. This is the forward part of the initial detail drawing. And this is mainly from the model. And this is from the airplane. The breakthrough was discovering that uh, the airplane just wasn't flying well, showing part of it on the deck and we decided to move it off the ship. Uh, and I was inspired by uh, what I consider one of my all-time favorite, probably uh, top five uh, model box tops uh, for me, and this is the Jack Lenwood uh, Vigilante leaving a, uh, an Essex-class carrier deck. So there we have the final composition. The airplane is now off the deck. The bridle is uh, snapping forward and going down the recovery track. 
We have the detail from the ship and the photos I showed you earlier. Uh, the airplane is configured correctly. This was all done from uh, a lot of study hall on uh, uh, control positions and flap settings and all sorts of things like that. I look at a black and white study of the comp uh, because this is a, a value test. Uh, this is kind of the dress rehearsal. If the painting works well in black and white, it's going to work that much better in color. And if there are any problems, this is where to discover them uh, and solve them before we get into final art. So the next step is to transfer the image of the final engineering drawing to the actual canvas. And uh, what you see here is the tissue containing the line drawing. And on the reverse side is charcoal uh, line work. And that charcoal will transfer the image to the canvas. I'll show you how that works. This is a close up and you can see the, uh, uh, the, the charcoal line and the indicators uh, positioning it correctly on the, on the canvas. So after the drawing is uh, transferred, this is what it looks like. It's pretty, uh, pretty raw. And uh, there's a lot of uh, charcoal dust and excess uh, imagery that's going to be uh, cleaned up. But uh, this is the wing showing all the panel lines. Uh, this is going to be very subtle in the final drawing, but I need to know this information uh, to make sure it's accurate. So here's the whole image. And this is the beginning of the underpainting. The underpainting is the first layer of color. I call it the primer coat. And uh, this establishes where everything's going to go. And then the final color and many layers of final color go over that to uh, bring the painting to a finished state. I'm using a piece of masking tape uh, to delineate the horizon. And here you can see uh, the paint, uh, the first layer of paint. This is impasto. You can see the brush strokes. Uh, again, it's pretty, uh, pretty raw, pretty basic. And this is all going to be uh, refined into final art. So here we have the underpainting of the ocean. You can see the uh, uh, transferred uh, charcoal image on the carrier and the airplane. This is the underpainting of the airplane and the first layer of color on the aircraft carrier. Here's a close-up of the underpainting. Again, pretty, pretty primitive, uh, pretty raw looking uh, coloration and, and uh, no detail yet. But uh, now I'm going to apply the markings. This is the stage at which the markings are applied to the airplane. So here's a nice close-up of the uh, aircraft number and uh, air refueling doors. And here's the flap. Uh, you can see the beginnings of the reflections on the uh, uh, flap uh, fuselage area. And here's the tail of the airplane with the uh, markings uh, indicated in the same uh, process of uh, transferring using the uh, charcoal. And that's the markings, uh, just about 90%. Still a little bit of cleanup and tweaking necessary to bring it to final art. And here's the finished painting. It was, uh, Brian uh, chose the title, Unbridled Elegance. And what we're looking at is the launch of a uh, flight to an air show in Belgium. And that was the photo I showed you in the beginning of, the, uh, uh, of this presentation with the airplane parked on the ramp. Uh, we chose this because we had uh, physical evidence. Uh, I've talked about Mashat's law, how airplane markings change over time. And we had a very good example in color of what the airplane looked like that day at that air show. Uh, and this is uh, from the Mediterranean uh, in 19, June of 1969. So uh, using that information, uh, this is what we created, the moment of launch of the airplane on its way to the show. Uh, the JFK was stationed in the Mediterranean uh, uh, for the better part of its career. And uh, I should mention that the unit is uh, RVAH-14, uh, which is Reconnaissance Attack Heavy Squadron uh, 14, the Eagle Eyes. And uh, here we see the airplane uh, in the final painting. And let me show you a close-up of the machine here, get a little more detail. Uh, it was a lovely project. Uh, it was a, a joy to paint and a wonderful experience to research the airplane and uh, meet Brian on the carrier and spend the whole day there on the, on the midway. Uh, you really get uh, inspired uh, and, and uh, just, uh, uh, it's, it's an emotional experience to uh, uh, just uh, really have fun with this. And the painting, uh, to use a good expression, just kind of came right off the end of the brushes. It just painted itself. It was uh, effortless, a lovely, lovely project overall. 
Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the story of the creation of uh, Unbridled Elegance, one of my favorite paintings in my career, actually. And uh, I thank you so much for celebrating aviation with Mike Machat. As always, special thanks to uh, my client, Brian, and uh, the uh, crew and docents and volunteers on the USS Midway Museum for uh, giving us a day that we will both always remember. Until next time, take care. <laughs>